Good morning. There I am. <laughs> I know I was here. <laughs> I think we should, um, maybe you'd all like to play the game with me of, will Pastor Cheryl be able to figure out when the prelude really is ending and get up there in time? <laughs> I think I did pretty well today. Good morning to all of you who are here with us today. It's good to be together as God's children to worship the Lord and to share as part of his family. Good to see you. And also to those of you who are online, a big welcome. This morning I am welcoming some of our regular online viewers, especially the non-members or former members or members who are far away. Um, Dorothy, Chuck and Carol, Karen, uh, Dawn and Roger, and nearby, Pat, John and Kim, and Mary Jill. I'm glad you were here to listen for your name. We remember you. We know you still belong. Thanks for watching and being part of our service online. We have just one announcement for you, and that is that from now until May 17th, we're going to be collecting hospitality items as part of our Tomorrow River Conference. It's part of our synod. And we are collecting these items um, for our camp, for Pine Lake Camp. All the churches in our conference are doing different aspects of camping, and our part is um, hospitality, things like shower curtains and uh, mattress covers, stuff like that. We will have a list for you. You're going to be hearing more about this. I'm not giving you all the details right now, just asking you to watch your email for further information, and I think there was a slide up today about it, and we'll keep filling you in. Please do not start bringing items, okay, because there are certain items they would like. Just watch. We'll make sure we cover it all. Thanks. And now it's time to stand and get our hearts prepared for worship, quiet down a little on the inside, and open our hearts. Almighty Father, you welcome us with open arms into your presence this morning. Thank you for your welcome. Thank you for this time when you can get at us through the songs, through the scripture, through the preaching, through the children's sermon, all the different ways your spirit has to speak to us. Open our hearts up so we can listen and receive and know that you love us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed in God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing together, Alleluia, Jesus is risen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you're able, please remain standing as we sing the canticle of praise. Now the feast and celebration. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Except for the children. Come forward, children. Thank you. Here they come. Good morning. Have a seat. <laughs> I know what you mean. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's put this over here. Now today you notice something very special, two beautiful flowers. Do you know what the names of them are? Lettuce. What kind of flowers they are? Lettuce. What? Lettuce. <laughs> what kind are they, Jacob? I think maybe what? Poppy. Maybe a poppy? What do you think it is? Any other ideas what kind of flower this is? <laughs> it's a purple poppy, evidently. It's an orchid. Have you seen orchids before? Right. Good. Aren't they beautiful? So, with all of our flowers, 
God, our creator, gave us all of our flowers. Isn't this awesome? And then he trains people on how to care for them. And if you notice this beautiful orchid, and I received it as a gift last weekend from a very dear friend, you'll notice there are new buds, right? And I'm thinking maybe by Mother's Day or sooner, they're going to be full flowers like this. And it's going to be so much fun to watch them blossom, sort of like people, right? We get to grow and flourish, and we start as like a little bud, and then we blossom as we discover the world and we discover how wonderful God is and Jesus, and it's so exciting. So I wanted to show you another orchid from our home. This one's similar, but look at parts of it. I'm going to bring it a little closer so that you can see it, okay? Do you see these tendrils, right? What would you do if this was your orchid? What do you think you might do to the orchid? Charlie, what? Maybe water it. What do you think? Maybe, maybe put, it by the sun. put it by the sun. That's really important. Oh, These suggestions are wonderful. So I asked a florist, and they kind of specialize in flowers, right? I said, what should I do? This orchid is probably two years old, whereas this is brand new in my home, right? So they said, Vicki, look at the ends and see if there's any green. And so, as you can see, it's kind of hard, but most of them have a little bit of green, which means they will eventually grow and blossom like us. But what do I do with the ones that aren't green? I have to use my pruning shears, but I have to be very gentle. It's kind of like the weeds in our life, kind of, you know, raking those weeds, maybe the mistakes and sins that we have, getting rid of them, asking for forgiveness. But we're being very gentle, and this one can be pruned, so we gently remove that. And I think there was a couple, were a couple more. Okay, wonderful. And now that will allow the plant to grow even more, which is awesome. And so what I think of is God creates everything, right? The plants, the animals, us, everything. Our whole globe, the cosmos, God created, heaven and earth, right? And Jesus is like our master gardener. He takes care of us. Sometimes we need pruning. We all do. And look at what we have the potential to become. Beautiful flowers, and that's what you are to me. You are flowers that are growing and getting more beautiful every time I see you. So let's pray, okay? <laughs> Good and gracious God, thank you for creating everything, including orchids. Thank you for tending us when we make our mistakes. Thank you for pruning us and showing us the way. Thank you so much for Jesus, our best friend and our master gardener. God bless us today. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. Children, you may go to Sunday school, but take Chloe with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want to forget Chloe. Chloe loves Sunday school. God speaks to us in scripture, reading, preaching, and song. Our first reading today is from Acts 8, beginning at the 26th verse. Led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been to Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him. Upon coming to faith in Jesus, he is baptized by Philip. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. 
in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from 1 John 4, beginning with the seventh verse. We love God and others because God first loved us. We cannot say we love God, whom we have not seen, while hating fellow Christians, whom we regularly see. Love toward God is to be matched by love toward others because the essence of God is love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from you, me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Sometimes when I title my sermons, I do it before I write them. So if I had titled this sermon before or after I wrote it, I would have entitled it, It's Impossible Unless. Okay, a new title. It's Impossible Unless. Aha. <laughs> You've heard a lot of scripture this morning. I wonder if you were able to catch the connecting thread among those three passages. That's a lot, of, a lot to listen to. This, these scriptures could be used to either beat you up or give you hope. So which would you prefer? A good scolding that leaves you feeling as if the Christian life is impossible? Certainly for you. Or would you prefer a word of hope that gives you courage to live the Christian life? Let's vote. Who would like to get beat up this morning? <laughs> Who would like a word of hope? Okay, I voted. Uh, it looks like I bet on the right horse because that's the sermon I wrote. <laughs> but first, let's get this straight. It is impossible to live the Christian life unless. Unless. Unless what? I want you to start listening for that. We'll know the answer by the end. Let's look first at the reading from Acts. One of my favorite Bible stories when I was a child about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. There are in this story two humans, one angel and the Holy Spirit, all involved in the encounter. Philip, one of Jesus' 12 disciples, the angel who appears to him with an assignment, should he choose to accept it. An Ethiopian, highly educated, wealthy eunuch who is reading scripture from Isaiah while traveling in a chariot. And then the Holy Spirit who gives Philip instructions each step of his assignment as it unfolds. So let's, let's take a look at Philip first. An angel comes to him from the Lord with an assignment we'd all resist. Get up and go to that road out there in the desert. That's what wilderness means. That road from Jerusalem to Gaza, the one that will be blistering hot. Get up and go. No explanation from the angel, no questions from Philip. Scripture says, so, he got up and went. Before, when Jesus was still on the earth, he would question Jesus. But not this time. This kind of obedience seems impossible, especially to our 21st century minds. We have learned to distrust just about everything. We question, we resist, we do background checks, we choose which facts we want to believe, we insist, insist on our rights more than we insist on the truth. So for us Christians, even us Christians, obedience comes hard. Because trust comes hard. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't just get up and go without weighing the pros and the cons. I might even conclude that that angel was actually a hologram and I didn't have to pay any attention to it. So the first seemingly impossible thing we see about the Christian life is how difficult immediate trusting obedience is. Impossible. Unless. Now, the eunuch is searching for the truth. He's willing to learn. 
He's very powerful, but he's willing to receive instruction. He's willing to admit his need and his lack of understanding. He knows what he doesn't know and is humble about it. And because of that, when Philip obeys the Holy Spirit and comes alongside his chariot and asks the eunuch, eunuch if he understands what he's reading, the eunuch practically begs Philip to teach him. He invites him up into the chariot to help him. No background check either. And Philip has exactly the words the eunuch needs to hear, and this brings his searching soul to belief in Jesus Christ. Doesn't this kind of humility and teachability seem almost impossible from someone who's so powerful? Just scan the political headlines. Watch the news a couple times. Even look inside your own heart. We recognize that these Christ-like qualities of our hearts are in short supply around us and within us. I know that I can't force myself to be holy. Well, maybe for a little while. But my own efforts eventually fall apart when I get tired or stressed enough or discouraged or angry enough or even hungry enough. Holiness doesn't come naturally to me or to you. It's impossible unless, unless. In our second reading, it seems even more impossible. Love as God loves. Whoa. The Greek word used here for love, consistently throughout that very long passage, is agape. And agape means the kind of love God offers us, which is completely selfless, intensely interested in the good of others, even to the point of dying for them, if need be. This kind of love that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit pour into us truly loves us into loving. Into loving God back and to loving those around us. We come to the point where we can... um, where we're able to confess Jesus as God from that love. And we come to know for ourselves this love from God. And we believe it is for us. And when we believe it is for me, if you believe it's for you, that is when faith really takes hold. To the point where the Holy Spirit grows that love in us. And fear begins to slink away. And we admit we love only because God loved us first. And we're not afraid anymore of what's going to happen next or even what's going to happen when we stand before God face-to-face on the judgment day because knowing God's love has made us complete to the point that we even love people who don't love us. For Scripture says that once we know God's love, we must love our brothers and sisters. And it's almost as if not only are we commanded to, but we can't help it because we know how loved we are. And this must seem very impossible to you. It does to me almost in our world where we are so divided in so many ways and we really feel hatred toward more people than we've ever felt hatred toward before. And we see it everywhere on the news and even in our own lives. And yet it's pretty clear here, isn't it? Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. I don't know about you, but there are those days when it seems to me impossible to love, especially the ones who have hurt us, sometimes even those in our own families. It's just not possible on a regular basis unless unless 
And now we are to our gospel, where we find the answer to our dilemma, where we find the answer to all our unlesses. We cannot live this Christian life unless, unless the Spirit of God lives in us, unless we live in Christ as Christ lives in us. When you were baptized, the Holy Spirit came to you, claimed you as God's child, and began to work within you. So your brother, Jesus Christ, is already within you through the Holy Spirit. Jesus uses this metaphor of the vine and branches. He says he's the vine, we're the branches. And God the Father is the gardener, or the farmer, who keeps the vine and branches Together producing fruit, good fruit, even if it means those branches have to be pruned to produce even more fruit or lopped off if they produce nothing. It is a work of love and kindness by the Father to open up the branches to Christ's loving fruitfulness flowing through them. Because as Jesus says, apart from me, you can't do anything. It is impossible apart from Christ living in us. Just as the branch can't cut itself off from the vine and keep living and bearing fruit, neither can we. Unless we live in Jesus, just as well as Jesus living in us. You cannot be obedient or humble. You cannot love the way God loves. You cannot produce fruit apart from Jesus Christ within. He is the source of your faith and belief. His life, his love, his obedience that took him all the way to the cross is for you. And it will flow through you to others. So what does that look like in real time for real people? Many who have, whom have been deeply wounded, rejected, betrayed. How do we live with Christ living through us? Well, partly it's just about showing up, being present to receive the rich nurture of the vine for you. This week I was visiting one of our members and read her a couple devotions from this daily devotional book, Christ in Our Home. I, I know a lot of you use this because we always buy a whole bunch of them at the beginning of three months and they're almost always gone by the end. I'd never read from this before because I've always had, I've got a stack of books on my couch and I, I thought, well, I have enough. But in reading this, I, I began to realize how good it is. And if you read through the scriptures each day that are given and the commentary, you will be showing up to the Holy Spirit, putting yourself in a place where you are listening from the, to the word, listening to the Holy Spirit, having something to ponder on through the day, learning to believe, to live in Jesus, to let Jesus live in you. It's not just about showing up, though, because you're the shower-uppers. You're here today. People online, you're there. We have shown up to here. It's also about opening up, and that can be impossible for people who've been deeply hurt in life. That, too, is a work of the Spirit, praying that our hearts will be opened by the Spirit to receive God's love through our vine, Jesus Christ. Each Sunday I pray before the service, please open our hearts, our eyes, our ears to you, loving vine. Speak to us. We're listening. Love us into loving you. Love us into loving others. For it is impossible to do this on our own. We can do nothing apart from you. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Lord. I know you all love stories. 
And this story is one of my favorite, and I have probably shared it with you in a variety of ways, but I would like to briefly, because if I remember how many my word count was well, by this point, I only have like 200 words left. So um, this is a story about my mom, who had grown up in the faith, being taught the faith, being taught about holiness, who was a pastor's wife, probably the best one ever. Good mom, always busy. And um, the sad truth was that she could not feel God's love. She could not know God loved her for whatever reason. I still don't know for sure. But here she was, ministering with my father all the time and feeling empty inside, like she wasn't a branch on a true vine. Literally, she would write scripture verses on little cards, and everywhere in the house where her eyes would rest, there would be a Bible verse telling her that God loved her. Even so, she could not receive it. So she came to a point when she was 56 when she prayed, and I know she did because it's in her prayer journal, and she said, I don't care what it takes, Lord, I have to know you love me. It could not just be intellectual for my mom. She needed to feel it in her heart. Not long after that, she started to have really, really bad headaches. And the process of diagnosis was long and torturous because back in 1984, 85, they did not immediately do CAT scans or MRIs, if they even had them then, the MRIs. And finally, finally, when she couldn't use words anymore, they did a CAT scan and discovered a stage 4 glioblastoma, which, as you know, if you know about that, is always fatal. And so um, she went through her surgery. And I always say that for whatever reason, going through that surgery was like a heart surgery because as, when she came through that and saw all the love poured into her from people, from her family, for the first time, she knew she was loved. And in her journal a couple months later, she writes, um, so much has happened since my last entry, but one thing I know for sure, capital letters, he loves me. It was there all along. She just for some reason hadn't received it. Well, once mom believed God loved her, and that's why I want to tell you this. She was a whole different person. You could feel the love of God coming through her. It was the most incredible transformation. And she even said, I feel like a butterfly that came out of a long cocoon. <laughs> and her life became one of joy and gladness for the next 16 months. She loved all of us in a way that none of us had experienced her her critical spirit was gone, her judgmentalism. She was just full of love. She was this branch that in 16 months bore more fruit than most people do in their whole life. God knew what mom needed. We all need something different, but God knows what you need too. What seems impossible as we battle with ourselves sometimes isn't ever impossible with God. God's heart of love for us overflowed to the point that he sent his only son to die for us, to rise again, to bring us back so we would not have to be apart from God. That we can be those branches on this divine vine that is patient and loving and constantly working to be received by us so that we can bear fruit with him. I just got goosebumps thinking about that. He is the vine, and we are the branches, and he lives in us, and he loves us, and we find the ability to live the Christian life only in him. Thanks be to God that we have such a faithful, faithful Father in heaven. Amen. 
Let's sing together, Lead Me, Guide Me. You'll have to use the hymnal for this. It's page 768. And stand and sing it out. No time for shyness. God is with us. Please join in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. In one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always, God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness, God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all the who are ill or suffering. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, mm -hmm. and for all who seek to share your love with the word, God of grace. Hear our prayer. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. peace of Christ be with you always. Please pass the peace.
Please stand. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's pray in the words Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning you are invited to the table if you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and your Savior from your sins. All are welcome. The feast is ready. Come, taste and see how good the Lord is. given for you the blood
please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We will close today with our hymn, I'm So Glad Jesus Lifted Me. Go in peace, share the good news of Christ's resurrection. He is risen, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God, God. alleluia. Have a great week, everyone. See you next week.